Hello and welcome to Voices of Parenting Podcast. I am so glad you're here. My name is Musi Diskin. I am an Advanced Nurtured Heart Approach trainer. I am a parenting coach. I am also an inner wealth coach, which means that I help people rediscover and connect to the people that they truly were all along, but may have gotten forgotten along the way. So to find out more about me and what I offer, you can check out musidiskin.com, contact me through there, respond to this podcast, find me on social media. I would love to connect and I would love to hear your feedback. To sponsor a Voices of Parenting podcast episode, please reach out to energizinghearts at gmail.com. Thank you for being here and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Stacy, I want to pick your brain. I want to pick your brain about your experiences with um, people who have experienced trauma or um, whether it was a trauma or even more, actually, let me make this more specific at first. We can always move into other areas after. Your experience with people who have not experienced a healthy attachment, who have not grown up in a home where their needs for relationship and approval were met and their needs for attachment were met. Um, and them coming into a parenting role or a teaching role and needing to, um, and needing to show up in that role. I want to talk about your experiences with that. I want to talk about, I want to hear about how that impacts their ability to be in that role. Um, and, and if there's healing and what that healing looks like, and I'm not talking nurtured heart here specifically. I mean, we both love it and we both would love for people to be able to do it, but I'm talking about specifically in your experience with people who maybe have wanted to do nurtured heart and that was the intention, but, um, how has, what's the, what's the hope or what's the story (laughs) people and and what have you seen as, as helpful? Good question. Um, lots of answers. Let me see if I can drill down. So I think if I'm hearing you correctly, please fix it if I've got it wrong. Um, So when people have trauma, whether it's nurtured heart or not, how does that impact them then when they're in this position of parenting or giving or connecting is really what it comes to. Yeah, I guess. And I love that you added in that connecting because honestly, it can be a, an intimate relationship with a, with yeah. a partner as well. It, it really isn't only about, or even friendship, or employers or employees, any relationship. Yeah, so I love that. Yeah, that's um, my question. Good job. So, so let's be clear, not an expert. There are real experts. That is not me. I'm a therapist, so I just want to clear that up <laughs> because, you know, the experts are Bessel van der Kolk. And well, Peter Stacey, Kahn. actually, let me, let me interrupt you there because <laughs> I – there's a lot of value that I find in this conversation specifically mm-hmm. because you are a therapist. What I want to know, I don't want to know the answers. I don't want to know the books. Everyone can go read them. I yeah. want to know that you can listen to professionals talk somewhere else. What I, what I want to know, Stacey, is in your experience, in your experiences, in your field work, right? Like yeah. real life people, what have you seen? And what's the reality in your experiences? It doesn't have to be everybody's, but in yours. So I'm going to share that, but I'm also still going to tell you not the expert. So that's just what it is. It's my my experience. There are real real experts out there, and I they've got great books. Quite frankly, I would tell you to go look on YouTube and watch them talk because they're distilled. They're the essence of what it is, and it matters. It, it clearly matters. And the biggest thing they would say, and what I would tell you, is what trauma and attachment does when you have issues. And so let's be clear. Everybody experiences trauma. So one of the first things I would tell you is I absolutely believe from the people I have worked with as a therapist, but also at Nurtured Heart, as a peer leader, walking down the street, my own family, doesn't matter. There's 8 billion plus people in the world. 8 billion plus people have experienced trauma. They've been overwhelmed at some point. Um, Attachment, there isn't 100% that lives in the world either. We've all had, we have great families who are what we would call healthy attached, 100% got it right. I, I don't think there's a parent in the world. Um, there isn't a connection in the world. So, uh, you know, I guess what I'm saying is we all probably have challenges here and there. Some of us is more severe. So the biggest thing I see is an inability to take it in. You know, Nurtured Heart talks about a firsthand experience. And we assume because we are standing in front of somebody 
waxing poetic deeply with the energy that someone can take that in. That's not always true. Because if you've experienced a lot of trauma, especially if you've experienced it as a kiddo, whose your trauma is really from your parents, then what you do is protect yourself. Our natural, I call it the safety system, nervous system, brain, whatever technically you want to call it, God-given, universe-given, uh, mother, it doesn't matter, gave us this system that will keep us safe at all costs. My dad said when I was a kid at one time, the brain will protect us at all costs. He was great with his wisdom before I ever opened the book. It will. And the way that gets healed is through loving relationships, and it doesn't get healed overnight. So my experience, Masi, is really about you got to stay with it. You got to be, oh, wow, this is a big subject. How do you go with this? First, you got to recognize somebody can't take it in. Then you got to be able to go, okay, I'm going to give it no matter what. You got to find an in, um, help people really kind of get it. And, and Howard, bless him, was ahead of the, ahead of the curve. And other talented, nurtured heart people have been ahead of the curve. Things when they do, what did you just hear me say? And what was that like for you? And what do you think? We got to find ways. And that's one of the ways to help people feel safe enough inside their body to feel the energy coming to them and let it in and then feel the physical sensation and the emotional sensation. And that is all I work on, is primarily what I work on as a therapist. But as a nurtured heart trainer, what I'm learning is that's where I start in my training. Because if they can't feel it physically and they have no context and past to know how to do that, or the past they have is so damaging and their protective shields are up, Star Wars, let's go with the Star Wars analogy. Um, I could do a 15 day training, doesn't matter. It's not my yeah, 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 going to get nowhere. But if I can set up an environment where they can feel it even for three seconds, safe enough, that the nervous system will let it in, that's, that's when you start changing lives. And I have, you've heard me say this a bazillion times. I don't believe you can teach attachment, can't be taught. It can only be felt. And so in order for people to give it, they got to get it. they got to receive it. And so... <laughs> my soapbox thing. It's hard. It's frustrating. It's um, ugh, some days my head comes to a point because here's the other piece. We'd like to just be about what can I give to you? What can I do for you? How can I get it in? But the reality is the person given has got their own issues. I got my own. Hmm. So some days I don't feel it. <laughs> some hmm. days I feel it too big. Some days it's really convoluted. Some days I got no focus. Uh, some days my own Crap's been triggered and yeah, I can say the words. I promise there's no energy to it. And I've been at this a long time. I don't care how old you are and how long you've been doing it. Crap happens. So it's a big question. It's sort of a nebulous answer I've given because I think there's 8.8 whatever billion people in the world. There's 8 billion different answers to this. Yeah. The reality is, is that you know, the structure is, is that you just stay in your heart as best you can and send your communication via, via the heart as best you can mm. and hope eventually it's going to be felt right there or felt enough or eventually we be felt or sort of registered. And then when the nervous system can sort of let it in, it will land. I mean, there's just... There's just so much. I, I think what I've really come to must see is so much of my initial work, especially with Nurtured Heart, was about what can I do and how do I learn the techniques and how can I really be in my heart and all of that, which is all good. But I think really what I'm learning, oh, I'm going to cry. I got to connect with myself. When you connect with yourself, the rest will come. Your intuition and your wisdom, your sense of energy, feeling others, feeling yourself will always give you, always give you what you need to do and be and how in the moment. So my really shifted in my work, which is 
the deeper, the braver, the more safe I can make it and allow others to make it safe for me. That's a new thing. Then the more connected I feel and the better my connections with others. And that's, that's when you start getting around the walls. That's when you start people let you in a little bit or you scare the heck out of somebody, <laughs> which you will see. <laughs> but on some level, they kind of know when you kind of back off. And I don't know, you just, you get better at reading people in situations and knowing how much to give and not to give. Mm. And if you're not connected to yourself, you can't do it, I don't think. Mm. <laughs> That's just, I love that you got emotional and you're here you're here and you're in your heart mm -hmm. and you're sharing and it's just beautiful mm -hmm. and i see you as such a, a human of integrity that you're a therapist and you have this job right and you're this professional of your profession mm -hmm. um but you're such a human and you're there with your heart and you're there for the people and you're finding ways mm -hmm. around around those walls because it's not about having sessions on your calendar and making sure that you're checkbook is full you know it's about mm. the people and finding a way through them and actually i know this about you from all the conversations we've had since i've known you mm. is you're constantly seeking ways to make this really land really make a difference you're not looking for any level short of a real difference that's all you want is to really help people and um i will take that in you should I mean, you helped me. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you're a beautiful person. I'm lucky to know you. So um, what I heard you say, what I think I heard you say in like the bigger picture of what you said is that <clears throat> when somebody has not had safe experiences in attachment and relationship for whatever reason, since that wasn't safe, they will have walls of protection up that are, that are, that are there to protect them. That are, that makes sense that are human biology and that are brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, and that because of those walls, they won't be able to then connect to the people they want to connect with. Almost like it sounds like, well, I guess you didn't exactly say this, but it's almost like the, the walls that are up in order to protect them from those that weren't safe from the experience that didn't feel safe now are also blocking them from themselves. And that last piece you just landed on and the tears are mm -hmm. like, I can't connect to you from anywhere else besides for my true self. And so if I'm not connected to my true self, then I can't know where the door to your wall is and I can't know how to get into you. And so really when we're talking about someone who's never had that secure attachment and that, and that safety of connection, that safe experience of connection, mm -hmm. that finding it's not about teaching them what to say or how to say it to the people in their life. It's teaching them how to find their door. And yes their door to their heart, to their selves. And what I hear you saying is this, is this dichotomy because what you're saying is because they have these walls, there's no way in. And yet your job is to find the way in, but there is no way in because there are these walls. And so you said being committed to believing that there's a way in and keep at it and finding that way in with your heart, letting your heart lead and, and finding that way in, even though it seems like there's no way in, and even when it's uncomfortable and even when they're pushing against it um, and creating as safe of a space as possible. And that's where I wanna move into. I wanna ask you in your experience of reaching people, of creating that safety, what does creating that safety look like? What is, I can't mm -hmm. force that door open, no. but what is the way to setting up for success that that door could open if it's ready to, how do we navigate? I guess I'm going to ask you from a perspective of somebody who's creating safety for someone else to open their wall. And I hope that we get to also creating safety for myself so I can open my own wall. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I guess whichever one you want to address first, 
uh, for whatever reason, my inside gut is going, tell the story, tell the story. So really where we find safety, must see, is through relationship. And so I'm going to back up about two years, year and a half now. Um, so I know you know my story, but uh, so I've been a therapist since about 2012 and fully licensed probably about six, seven years and out of my own private practice. And part of that private practice, the reason I'm on my own is because I'm doing a specific therapy that's pretty intense um, for its learning and in-depth and blah, 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 and a lot of money. So like, frankly, before I started writing checks, I wanted to know what it felt like on the patient or the client side, because I think the only way to know is to experience. So I found this type of therapy therapist and signed up and I thought, well, I'll go a couple, three months. That'll be enough. I'll be fine. I've been doing therapy all my life <laughs> for most part, you know, on and off. And I'm still in it. And the reason I'm still in it is because part of this therapy is so relational focused. It is absolutely, I mean, it's about processing through trauma. It's about ahas. It's about all the things we kind of think of about the therapy but the other part is it's also really about starting to recognize, experience, and feel the sensations of that connection in a very safe, clear boundary way because processing trauma also involves involve safety and that only can come with the relationships. So the beautiful part is, is our relationships are what really heal us and provide safety. And specific to those who know Nurtured Heart, Nurtured Heart is a really great place to start because you really can start to create a safe space, a holding space. A holding space is probably even better where you can hold people in safety in love, in see, being seen, all, all the stuff we're all craving, quite frankly, in that connection. And even if all their nervous system and they get is one amazing connection with you, it may not go through the wall, but there's a place in them that's going to go, well, that was weird and that was different, kind of felt good. <laughs> oh, I might, I might want a little more of that. Don't know that I can trust it. But what you've created is a little bit of tension that they've now gone, huh, maybe life isn't always like it was for me. And I can't tell you how many people I've sat with as adults who said as a kid, I had that one foster parent. We had that one neighbor. I had that one teacher. We had that one guy that lived down the block. The one, whatever the case may be, um, who one, they may have experienced house maybe the way they their house never looked but they also experienced somebody who respected them but met them where they were at which is the other secret you got to meet people where they're at so if somebody's not able to speak and maybe they're tearful you got to give them some space if somebody's got some rough language pretty coarse you know telling them not to be maybe not so helpful just you know be like okay you like to swear and you're pretty coarse and I love your honesty about that. And wow, thanks for sharing it. Feeling so comfortable to do that with me that you trust me to be yourself. I mean, what might that land like for somebody to be accepted, which I think is the other big piece that we don't talk about is acceptance is where we start to feel safe. That's probably the biggest thing we can do for people is accept them where they're at. Hmm and see what might also be there, the glimmers, the shimmers, but accepting right this moment and them is powerful. Yeah, And that's, and that's where I, I got to be connected to myself because some people I go, oh, 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 oh. From a distance, it might be good to say good stuff. Somebody's here. Yeah. Somebody's done awful things. If you think therapists don't have moments of going, what the heck am I doing sitting across from this person? You would be wrong because sometimes we think that. People do things. People do things. They're people. But you also know about your neighbors. You also know about people in your family. And what do we do? We tend to pull away 
from people when they've done things we don't agree with, we don't like, whatever the case may be. And so how do you find it within yourself to go, I got to take them where they're at in this moment to find that connection. And you got to know yourself to be able to do that. My therapy is what's allowing me to become the kind of therapist I want to be. I mean, the training's great. Don't get me wrong. My consultations and my supervisors, amazing. But I would tell you hands down the part that's getting me there is the, it's the therapy. Your own therapy with your own therapist. Yep. Because the closer I get to myself, the more I know myself, the more accepting I'm becoming with me, the better I am when I sit in my chair. And my relationships are changing. I, just like Nurtured Heart. Remember going to Nurtured Heart? Relationships started to change. Magical. What? What's the deal? It's the same thing. Yeah. So it's like leveling up for the gamers out there. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, we're going to do a part two, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to close up in a second after this one sentence. And we're going to ask Stacy about how we can find her and all that. But I'm just going to, and then we'll do a part two because I want to hear about <coughs> the aspect of taking my own walls down. Um, the, but what I want to say, just even from like a logical standpoint is like relationships about two people connecting and being in each other's realm and each other's world. And I can't have you in my world if I'm not willing to accept you because then there's a part of you that I'm not allowing in. <laughs> if I don't accept you, then, then you're not here. Then I don't let you here. And so it's, it's like, it's just like, yeah, that makes sense. That acceptance mm -hmm. is what's needed for there to be relationship. And if relationship is the healing thing, if safe relationship is the healing thing, then acceptance is, is the answer. And then, yeah. And then how do I, how do I accept? Well, right. Understanding. I mean, there's like, how do I, but breaking that down and learning how to do that. Yeah. So, so Stacy, so we're going to have a part two because oh. we're not done with conversation. But to close off right now for our listeners, um, tell us if somebody wants to learn more about the therapy you're doing, whether it's the therapy style you're doing or you personally, mm -hmm. can they reach out? Is there somewhere mm -hmm. there could look? What could they expect? Yeah. So right now I would say I'm sort of in flux and kind of figuring out what is and isn't going to happen. So the most consistent con connection they can make with me is with my email address, which is Zana, Z-A-U-N-A-H at um, Outlook.com. Absolutely. Um, and part two, that sounds exciting. Not sure where we're going to go with that. But uh, can I just say one more thing real quickly? Sure. It was kind of an aha. Uh -huh. So one of the things Musty, I'm finding most uh, of an aha for myself is I can shift and be all that I need to be in present with people. But I'm finding that the things that prevent me from really connecting from people I see in myself when I'm driving down the road and the person in front of me is not going fast enough or I'm on email or Facebook or whatever. And the thoughts going through my mind, not so positive and incredibly judgmental. And, you know, just those everyday little, little things is where I'm finding an energy in myself. I don't think I ever realized was there. And as I'm working on those, again, I give therapy all the credit for that. I find that I'm deeper in my presence when I'm intentional and it feels so much more genuine mm. and I don't have to shift into it that it's just there. So maybe that we can set up for the second one. Um, but it's really, I don't know. I turned 61 yesterday. I feel like I've entered a whole new life what? yesterday. Happy yesterday. birthday. No, but I feel like in this next section of my life is this great, um, adventure that I could never imagine. And I'm really excited about it, even though days I'm going, oh, I can't believe I just said that. Oh, I can't believe I just thought that, whatever the case may be. It's, um, it's freeing. Mm. And it's an accept and an accepting of yourself is probably the freer, it is what creates that freedom. So okay, yeah. we're going to talk about that um, in a second here or next week for all of you listeners. Um, I will put her email in the show notes. So you can reach out to her if you'd like and see you next time. Hey, wait, don't go yet. 
Take a minute to find the beautiful quality that you have that you appreciate about yourself. Thank you.